welcome back to my channel. If you're new, hello, hello, how are you? My name is Diana and my channel is all about motherhood, self-care, and weight loss. Okay, so today, I know it's been a while, but I'm bringing you guys a highly requested motherhood video. And we are going to talk about my 10-day foolproof potty training method. If you're into all of that, of course, go ahead and subscribe down below. Hit the like button for more videos and sign on the bell so that you can know when I'm dropping my next video about motherhood. All right, so let's get into it. The first thing I want y'all to do is go get a notepad right quick. Now, go get it, come back, because I'm about to be sharing a whole lot of stuff. If you see me looking down, it's because I'm looking at my notes. Just want to make sure that I have my notes as well. Pause it. Let me know when y'all come back. I'm going wait. All right, let's go. Day one. Day one is all about you. The first thing you want to do is ask yourself, are you ready? What I mean by that, can you clear your schedule? Because you're going to need to clear your schedule for these next 10 days. If you do not clear your schedule and you have a lot going on, it is not going to go the way you need it to go. Um, if you're too busy and can't stay focused and stay cannot stay on top of things. Um... This method can be knocked out over a weekend, can be knocked out over like a, a four-day weekend, um, you know, a time that you're not really busy at work, but it needs to be done when you have as least going on as possible. Maybe just a regular to work and home um, type of thing or try to start on a weekend. Um, so maybe your day three should start on a weekend because day one, two, and three is kind of about getting started and preparing all right so you want to make sure you again you want to make sure you clear your schedule you want to make sure you find your diaper stash find your diaper stash count up your last little bit of diapers bring them all in because you don't want to find one later and be like oh let me stick this diaper on them if you don't have any diapers you will stick to this if you have a diaper you're gonna be like i don't feel like it today and you're gonna put the diaper back on all right Trust me. The next thing you want to do is go ahead and buy everything that you need. And I will list this down in the description just in case somebody needs to know where to buy these things. I'll list some links on where you can get all of these items. But you're going to want to buy some training underwear. Um, try to get like a little bit of a thicker version of training underwear. Um, it's going to do you some justice with the poop, um, the pee. Then it's not going to hold pee, but it's going to do you a little bit of justice with the poop not coming out, getting everywhere if they have on training pants, training underwear. Um, you're going to want to purchase a stepping stool. Um, get one that's a little bit higher than what toddlers and preschoolers will need because it's really going to help them um, when their feet are dangling off the toilet. Um, you want to purchase a mattress cover. We do night training all in one, so they're, they are possibly going to wet the bed. So go ahead and purchase some mattress cover, something that's going to be really easy for you to pull off, throw in a washing machine, and keep it rolling. Um, you may want to purchase one or two, just depending on, again, how busy your life is, is at this moment. Um, you're going to want to purchase a little potty seat that can go on top of your potty. I don't really care for um, potties because kids often think they're toys, but if that is your choice. I don't think it's going to make a break potty training, but in my method, we just like to use a potty seat unless we're, um, and I mean the seat that goes on top of the actual toilet in your house, unless you're out and about, um, and running in weeks to come, because we're not going to be doing any errands right now, then you want to put the potty in the car. Day two is going to be all about preparing baby. Asking yourself, is baby ready? Can he or she say pee or poop? Can he or she follow one-step directions? Does he or she wake up dry most mornings or mostly dry? Or are they waking up soaked? Okay, the next question you're going to want to ask, do I have any major life-changing events going on right now? Am I moving? Am I expecting? Did I just have a new baby? Do Did my baby just start a new daycare? Did I just get a new daycare provider? Um, any of those things is not a good time to potty train because babies are focused on um, adjusting to something else. You don't want them adjusting to too much at one time because it can just cause a lot of behavior issues and, again, draw out the process. Okay? 
The next thing you're going to want to do on day three is start baby on a schedule. Baby should be waking at the same time, eating at the same time, napping at the same time, and going to bed at the same time. If baby is not doing all of those things and you're busy trying to get baby on a schedule, baby's not ready to potty train. Because again, baby needs to be on a routine because that's going to help potty training go a lot easier. If you can, when you're watching this video, try to start before. But if you're just now seeing this video and you're like, I'm ready to start right now, then go ahead and start baby on a schedule and go ahead and start with day number one. All right, so day number three. Day number three, you're going to start taking baby to the potty every time that you go. So anytime that you go to the potty, take baby with you. Um, calmly introduce baby to the potty. Start talking about pottying. Like you should be having potty conversations all day. Like this is a day where we're like pee pee, poop poop, butt butt, whatever you're calling it. We need to go ahead and create a name for it and let's go. Let's do this. Don't really pressure baby about going. If they want to sit on a potty after you, hey, mommy just went to the potty. Do you want to go? They're excited about it. You know, let's roll off a little bit of tissue. Be careful with that one. But just get baby in the mood. Create a definitely a happy, serene atmosphere around the potty so that baby's not afraid and you don't really get met with power struggles or resistance because this this is the day that you're asking baby, does he want to? Do you want to try this? Um, just kind of getting them in the mood for things, not making it necessary or mandatory today. Um, lots of potty conversations. The next thing you're going to do on day three is you're going to take baby to get that diaper sash that you put together. You guys are going to bag it up together and you guys are going to throw it in the trash can. No more diapers. And then you're going to show them what they're going to be wearing from now on. Pull-ups for nighttime is okay. If you feel more comfortable doing it that way, it's okay. But I follow a cold turkey method. And if I found that when I steer away from that, it just drags it on. This is one of those you just got to knock it out and get it over with. You got to be okay. Buy some gloves. Whatever you got to do if you're squeamish. Put a put two or three mattress pads on. Whatever you got to do to go cold turkey, I'm telling you, it'll go a lot quicker if you just go ahead and do it. Day four is go time. You're going to wake up day four and we're going. The first thing you're going to do the moment baby wakes up, his opens his or her eyes, is take baby to the potty. Good morning. I love you. Today is a great day for potty training. Say your affirmations. I know you can do this. We're going to do this together. We're going to get through it. And then you're going to put baby on the potty. You're going to have a stopwatch or alarm. Or we have Alexa. If you have a Google Home, just tell Alexa, hey, baby didn't go to the potty. Set an alarm for five minutes if baby does not go. That's enough time for baby to brush his or her teeth and wash face. Normally, a baby at this age, at about the time they're two. And you can start this whenever you feel like baby's ready. I don't feel like you have to wait till two because I've potty trained a baby prior to two before. Um, It's easier once they are already two though. I will say that. What you're gonna do is when babies first wake up, normally they pee the moment they wake up. So if you can kind of already set your alarm, because baby's on a schedule, already set your alarm, know when baby's going to wake up or go wake baby up because I had to wake mine up a few times, take them straight to the potty before they even wet the bed. They normally are not wetting themselves midnight unless you're still breastfeeding. And we'll talk about all of the troubleshooting after or maybe in another video, but let's continue to move forward. So brush baby's teeth, um, wash face, it, that should be enough time for them to go. They should be going by then. There's no way they shouldn't be going unless they woke up soaking wet because they you didn't get to them in time. If baby does go, then set your alarm for 25 minutes. If baby does not go, set your alarm for 10 minutes. So write this down. You always return in five-minute increments. So if they don't go, take them back in five minutes. They don't go, take them back in 10 minutes. They don't go, take them back in 15 minutes. Keep going up until baby goes. Should it need to go up no further than 15 minutes. So this is what it looks like. Baby wakes up, baby goes to the potty. Baby doesn't go to the potty, wash face, brush teeth, take baby bits to the potty. By the end, if baby doesn't go, go ahead and fix breakfast before baby eats, try again, because 10 minutes should have been done went by by then. So you kind of do that. The moment baby is done eating, they need to drink a four to eight ounces of water. You're going to pump baby with water, milk, juice, 
whatever floats your boat, you're going to pump them with it. They should always have a sippy cup in their hand because that is how you're going to make it go. I got this advice from somebody like years ago and it works really well. Then they'll always have to go. You want them to always have to go those first couple of days because they need practice. And that's the way they get practice is having to always go because they're like, oh, okay. And it clicks. Okay. And then it makes it a lot easier that way. So the moment baby gets done eating, give them something to drink, take them to the potty. Again, you're going to do the 5, 10, 15 minute until baby goes. Once baby goes, you're going to wait 25 minutes. So if they don't go 5, 10, 15 minutes, if they do go, wait 25 minutes on day four. On day five, you're going to repeat everything the same way. It should go a little bit easier because the first day is going to be hectic. But what's important is setting the timer. If you don't have a lot going on, this may be easy. If you do have a lot going on, you have to set a timer because especially if you have other children that tend to set the timers. Day six, if the day before they have had less than three accidents, or I'm sorry, three or less accidents, then you are able to now go up to 30 minutes, okay? Day seven, same thing. If they're having three or less accidents, you are able to go up to 45 minutes, meaning 30 minutes, after they have used the bathroom. If they do not use the bathroom, you still follow the same every five minute increments until they go, okay? Day eight, you're going to want to take it up to an hour only if they are having less than two accidents. One to two accidents a day. If they're only having one to two accidents and mostly at nap time or mostly if you just forget and it's one of those is your fault accidents, go ahead and take it up to an hour or they should only at that time be going when they first get up after they eat, um, when it's time for snack, when it's time for nap, when they wake up for nap, when it's time for snack, when it's time for dinner, after dinner, after bath, before bed. So they can kind of just be going at those times that they're hitting on their schedule rather than you having to set your watch um, so much. If you don't feel comfortable doing it that way, then usually you can just take them every hour. Um, day nine, you can again, continue to try taking them every hour and continue that as long as they're only having one accident a day. Um, especially take them after they eat, especially take them after a nap. When they wake up, they have to go period. All right. So that is the tips on how you're going to get things started. Now let's talk about what do we do? after an accident this is very important if you're not one of those people that are comfortable talking to toddlers are you not a talking parent this is where you're going to start having to do a lot of talking and explaining um this is something you need to talk them through it needs to become cognitive it needs to become behavioral um and you're going to want to make sure you keep a calm approach because it's normal it's not embarrassing you're going to talk them through it Oh no, you had an accident. Things like that. Oh no, you peed on the floor. That's not where we pee. Let me show you where we pee. You always take them to the restroom when they're done and sit them on the toilet and say, hey, next time let's pee here, okay? Because we don't want to wet the floor. We don't want to have a uh-oh. We don't want to have an accident. Whatever your language is with your child, this is a time to let them see what's going on. Look them in their eye. Make sure they know what's going on because they're not going to know off the bat. They're going to be like, oh, something's going on here because I'm used to, I'm not used to water running down my legs. So what's going on? You're going to talk them through that. That is the key. That is what you're going to want to do. So no yelling, um, definitely no spanking, no shaming, definitely no shaming, um, things like that. Um, just kind of talk them through it and be gentle. About day six, you want to start letting them know you're serious. Like, hey, you can also reward them. That will help. I didn't throw that in. But you can also um, reward them. And you want to reward them with um, snacks. It doesn't have to be sugary snacks. Stickers, um, more screen time, hugs, kisses, singing a song. Whatever it is that you want to reward them or whatever you normally reward them with, um, a special toy, a special potty book. But everything needs to be about potty these next couple of days because babies go off a routine. 
That's how they work. And only by day three or four, if you are consistent, even with sleep training, even with any type of training, they normally start to catch on. And that's why it's really good to start around two. When you start getting into the late twos, early threes, they're going to power struggle and it's going to be behavioral issues. And that's another topic for another day. So I'm thinking I'm going to have to do a part two, but let's move on because I don't want to make this too long. All right. So what do we do about poop? Poop is going to take a little bit more patience. Um, again, get those training pants because it hold, kind of holds the poop in there. What I do is when they when they poop on themselves, you're going to take them to the bathroom. You're going to pull the underwear off. You're going to take the poop and you're going to drop it in the toilet in front of them. This has to be done in front of them. If they, if they made a mess, leave the mess. We're going straight to the bathroom. We're popping the poop in there. And if you need to put them in a bathtub, that's fine. But this poop. This is where the poop goes. Don't you agree? Do you understand? Poop in the potty. Say it with me. Poop goes in the potty. Okay? Poop. Um, also, if you have a busy body, like my fourth child is really busy, um, it's a little bit harder for them to feel the need to sit still to poop because pee comes out really quick. Poop is a little confusing for them. They know they have to go. They may push. They, only gas comes out. It takes a while for them to kind of recognize that. So you want to try to stay on top of that. If you see them grunting, see them pushing, oh, no, wait, let's hurry up and go. Run them to the restroom. If they poop on their stuff, even the poop is already in there, run them to the bathroom. Quick response so they kind of know the urge like, oh, I need to run when I feel this pooping urge, okay? Um, what you can also do with poopers is um, books tablets, um, let them play with stickers, let them drink water, let them listen to music, maybe let them take a warm bath and while they're running, take a warm bath, rub their tummy, rub their back, kind of stimulate because cause some children are very preoccupied. They don't have time for poop breaks. So that's what you want to do to kind of keep them busy while they're sitting there. You can also try a little juice to make the stool a little softer. The stepping stool, especially for girls, is needed. It needs to be tall enough to where their feet can rest on it. It makes it easier for them to push. These are a lot of things that are just going to make it easier and not just drag along. So I am going to come back and do another video. And we're going to talk about um, power struggles, behavior issues around potty training, um, and a little bit more troubleshooting things that you can do. And we're also going to talk more about nighttime training. So make sure you go ahead and hit that notification bell. Oh, wait, it's down here. <laughs> hit the notification bell um, so that you can see when I drop part two of my potty training video. If you like this video and you found it very helpful, if you could, please like it for me. And make sure you subscribe and share and all of those good things. And thank you always, always for your support. All right, until next time, make sure you guys stay healthy.